So today on this video for Final Cut Pro X version 10.3 for beginners, we're going to look at the colour correction options that we have available. So let's just have a quick move over to the screen. So to access the colour board, again there's a number of different ways as always, so we're going to select a clip, we're going to go to this option here at the bottom uh, left hand side of the, of the viewer and click on this little drop down menu here. So we have here um, a few different options. The primary one I want to have a look at here, we'll have a look at these at, at the end, um, the main one I want you to have a look at is a show colour board, which is also accessed by command 6. So if I click on this option here, this is going to open up a colour board um, for this particular clip. Now, I'm going to go back again, so we have our inspector open here at the moment. Another way, so obviously we have command 6, our keyboard shortcut, which will open up the same area and this one's going to bring us back. We can also go to our effects browser, which we haven't quite gone to yet, but we're going to work on that in the next video. Um, there's an option for colour correction, which doesn't make any adjustments to it until you do, but it's something that you can drag and apply to the clip right here, and where you can go over. This can be particularly useful if you want to apply more than one colour correction to the same clip, because sometimes you can't um, add blue into into the midtones and also add pink, so you know, you're going to quite have a a few additional options available to you. So we have our colour correction applied here at the moment, so we're going to go through each section and show to show you what they do. So the first option, let's just find a different part of the clip, it's spinning quite a lot. <laughs> so let's go with this one for the moment. So we have here our colour, so the colour is the first option here. Um, with all of the, um, with each option here, you've got colour, saturation and exposure. And with all of these here, you've got these Four options. One is global, so global is, an, is applied to every aspect of the image. Shadows will apply that adjustment just to the black, so the dark deep tones. The, the, um, the grey circle is going to apply just to the mid-tones, so kind of the mid-range of, of the light spectrum, and then the highlights is only going to apply that particular correction to the light areas of the screen. So if we have global for example, um, Within our colour, this is our global option here that we can make adjustments to. Again, you can do it numerically <laughs> by percentage if you know kind of all the details there, or you can do it visually using these you know, these uh, these dials up here. Saturations, this is your global, so it applies to the entire image here. Blacks, midtones, and highlights. Same thing with exposure. You've got your um, global here, shadows, midtones, and highlights. So let's just have a look here at the first option, which is colour. So with all of these, you, got, you can see here you've got your plus and your minus. So if you drag any of these options above the white line, it's going to add more of that particular colour. And if you drag it below this line here, it's going gonna, it's gonna to subtract that colour from it. So let's have a little look at the image here, for example. So let's have a look at, you know, the, the, the skin I think here is, is a little bit too yellow. So if we take the global here and drag it over to the yellows, if I was to bring it above the line, it's going to add more of this, these kind of yellow tones to absolutely everything. You can see here that distorts the image a little bit. Um, for creative effect, absolutely, you can use these these um, these effects to, to create um, images that don't correlate with what, what's visually seen, you know, for creative imagery. But right now we want to have a look at sort of practical applications of these types of adjustments. So if I'm bringing the entire image up, you can see it's getting more and more and more yellow if I drag the entire image down. It's taking any warmth out of that image and it's subtracting it from every single portion, which is not exactly what we want. So I either can do Command Z to undo that, or I can go up here to my little reset. That's going to reset all of those, those options here. So if I was again to do that individually with each portion, so if I added more yellow just to the blacks, the rest of the, the image is difficult to see, but it doesn't change much. The little areas of light are kind of actually maintained um, and do that just with the midtones. And this is the one we want to look at here. It's not making any effect to the black this time, just to the midtones. You can see adding a little bit more yellow deepens that. Adding a little less yellow pulls it down. You start to see these kind of red tones coming through. And you want a little bit less red as well. So the skin starts to look a little bit more natural there as well. If I use the, the highlights, Ideal. So you can apply a little warmth to the highlights, not distorting it too much, because there aren't too many areas here that are, that are pure white. And drag it down. I'm just going to make effects to the highlights here. So I think this just the slight adjustment adjustment to the midtones, maybe even a tiny little bit of the highlights is probably all I need to do to make the skin tone look kind of nice and natural. 
If I wanted to apply another effect, I thought I might have done maybe was to bring out a little bit of the, uh, the reds, actually. I could always use this to do that. Just to um, neutralize a little bit of the red tone that's happening as a result of them hanging out for to make the skin look nice and natural. Uh, the next option we have along here is saturation. Now what saturation does is how much colour is, is supplied. So if I was to take the overall colour again and bring that right up, you start to see the colours get very, very strong. So just applying more and more of that colour in. A little bit of increased saturation can be quite nice just to give the colour a little boost, make them quite vibrant. If I was to do that on the clip here next to me, you might see a little bit more clearly. So if I increase the saturation, yeah, it goes a bit, a bit crazy when it's really cool, but just a little bit of additional saturation can just boost those colours. Just a teeny bit, suffice to reset that you can kind of see, see the difference between the bit of colour and the red. Let's go back to this clip just here. Again, de decreasing the saturation. If I take it down just a little bit, you're going to see that the colours are a little bit softer. Get that slight desaturated look. You can look quite, quite nice, that kind of, kind of calm, almost kind of vintagey look that you get with a little bit of desaturation. Um, if you bring the saturation all the way down, that's essentially where you get your black and white. Now bringing all of your saturation down, down you're, that's where you're going to really see how, how your light is functioning and how much kind of contrast you have available to you. So very often when you bring your saturation down, you then usually have to make a little bit of an adjustment to the, the, the light to make sure that it still looks... Um, so that it still looks nice and, and vibrant and kind of poppy. Because when we don't have those colours, we really see how our light works. Let's bring those up again. Um, similarly, again, you can just increase or decrease the saturation in a particular area of the screen. So you might, I mean, decreasing the blacks isn't going to do much because it's already pretty black. You can see there's a little bit of shadow in the face. Um, you might want to just maybe just decrease the midtones a little, again, to sort of soften the skin. If I bring this one into play, you might see a little bit more, a little more detail. So, for example, let's take it around right here. So the saturation you can bring up and you point it to just to boost it. You might desaturate your mid tones down. It's going to create one particular effect. Just desaturation on the black is going to soften it there. Then quite kind of nice kind of vintage look. And just in the highlights, it's going to soften that there as well. Similarly, increasing maybe you just want to increase the saturation in the mids. Just to get that nice kind of bright poppy look, just in the highlights. You can see there, bringing that right into the skin. And just into the blacks. A very different, different look again. Let's just go back to our clip here so you can see what we're working with. So yeah, we've had a little bit of desaturation in there, but I don't think it needs too much. Let me bring it up keep, keep a little bit of that one. Um, now one of the main ones I have to go into now is the exposure. So the exposure, similarly, we have our globals. If you bring the globals up, that is going to expo uh, expose the entire image. It's increasing, yeah, how much how much the, the image is being exposed. It's going to get basically lighter or darker, essentially. You bring the global, the entire image is going to get lighter. Bringing it down, the entire image is going to get darker, less light has been brought in. So most of the time, again, you tend not to want, I mean, this is a, it's a creative look. You can kind of work with these oh, types of images or ideas for, um, if you have a particular um, look that you're trying to achieve. Um, but for just for us working on making our images look nice and natural, we're going to keep this pretty much where it is. If you had an image that was under or overexposed, overexposed is difficult to deal with because very often you end up with um, some times you can't bring um, bring back areas of light that have been. Um, let's do it with this one again so you can see. Sometimes you can't bring back areas of light that have, that have been washed out. And if you have too much dark, sometimes when you bring up the, the brightness, it ends up being too grainy. But we'll have a look here. So we've had a little bit actually dropping the exposure of this one. It's actually not bad. It kind of makes the uh, the colours a little bit richer. So it won't be too bad a decision to, to use that in this one here. If I was to up it, again, it's going to get very, very washed out and white. But it might be useful for different lighting situations. Let's go back. Let's go over here. Um, so this, yeah, if you want to create, create an image basically of, um, of high contrast, what you want to do is to create, to um, deepen or darken the blacks um, or lighten the whites. So if I take my blacks here, the blacks are, they're pretty black, but it's going to just suggest, as you can see, this area here is a little bit more dark here. The lights lifting the whites, 
you're going to reach a point where it's really overexposed in the wash type. A little bit of increase in the whites just uh, increases that, that dynamic contrast. And then you, could, yeah, then you can make a decision there as to where your mid-tone mid tones lie within that. So it's making no adjustments to the dark at all. But you can see as I increase that, you get this kind of little bit of green and noise when you increase beyond what the camera was able to capture. If I was to take this then and go back to my black and white scenario, actually, you can see this is where playing with the, the shadows starts to become really interesting in the types of effects that you can kind of work with that nice high contrast black and white imagery can look quite cool. Or you might decide that you do actually want a bit of like that kind of global, sort of slightly kind of washed out look. Create a little bit of a kind of softer almost matte look to it. You can have a play. So there's lots of different options available to you. It really is one of those ones you just have to have to have a play with. What kind of look do you desire and what, what um, imagery do you need in order to achieve that? Let's go back to my saturation there and just bring it back up. It's like the saturation is quite nice. Um, so that's just kind of overall a little bit of a little bit of play. Um, one of the main things it can be really useful for is to um, for colour matching. So if I take this actually I'm going to just disable this colour uh, correction. I'm just going to go back to where it was. So you can see already the difference that that's made skin looks much more softer, a bit more natural to this kind of like harsh bright yellow light that we had. Um, so let's go to two clips here actually which are very different, shot in kind of different lighting situations. So if I bring this on, copy, copy and paste a version of this, of this clip in its original form. So this clip here is, is um, where's my yellow one? Oh this one's got a bad. Okay, so this is our original clip, which is quite warm and yellow, and this clip was shot with a different camera from different, with different um, settings, and it's a little bit cooler. You can see, and it's a little bit more desaturated. So let's say we decided actually this is the color state that we want everything to match because it kind of matches with some other other um, cameras that we have. This can come in come in quite handy. Um, so this is a function that we have actually with the with Final Cut. This one. I haven't found it to be brilliantly effective, but if there's only a slight difference between angles, sometimes it can be quite useful. So I'm going to go to map. I'm going to try <laughs> to match color. So if I go to match color here, now this I've selected this color, so it's going to make the adjustment to this image. So let's say I wanted this image to match this image. I'm going to go here and I'm going to click on the point where I want it to, to have a look at that and match it. So you can see here, it's tr it's tried to match the situation now. It's kind of overcompensated a little bit too much. It looks a little bit too kind of blue green in the highlights, and it's definitely lost the natural natural skin tones. If I apply that there, so you can see, yeah, it's even though it's back, um, a bit cooler, it still looks quite natural. Whereas this one, you can kind of see it's very very green in the highlights. So let's just undo that that option. Let's try it the other way around then and see if we can match this one here. I have to make sure this playhead is over what I'm trying to match. Let's see if I can match this here to this one. Match colours. I want it to match the tones that we have here. So that's gone again. It's really overcompensated. You can give it a try. It's not one that I find to be particularly useful. So I have a tendency to kind of actually match my colours more visually and subtly using the colour board itself. So I know in this one I can see compared to this colour, this has got lots of kind of warm yellow tones. It's a lot more. Uh, there's a lot more saturation, the colours are a lot richer. So I'm going to say I'm going to match this one here. So I'm going to, again, I can either use my sort of command 6 to the colour board or I can drag the colour correction over or I can access it here with, with show colour board. So let's have a look at those things that we were considering there. So the colour, I know that I want, not in the blacks, the black, I want my blacks to be blacks, so it's not the colours that I want to adjust here. It's going to be either my uh, mid-tones or my highlights, possibly a little bit of both. So let's just go here over to the sort of yellows and oranges and just bring those up just a little bit. So maybe bring those yeah, in this kind of tones. Go over here. Maybe bring this up just a little. So it's already starting to look a little bit closer to this one. Still not hugely actually. Let's, yeah, increase it a little bit more. Um let's have a look at how that's going. It's getting there. It's a little bit a little bit too pink. Just a hint, so I might pull that over. A bit more in the reds. I think also I need to increase the saturation slightly. So I'm going to go over to my saturation, increase my global saturation just a tiny bit. 
starting to get there. Let's go back to my color. That's my highlight. So I'm going to a little bit more of the yellow there. And that's starting to look a little bit more like what I want to achieve. So let's just fill the screen up for a moment. It's getting there. It's a little bit too green, which is kind of interesting. So this might be one where you'd actually want to apply a couple of color corrections. Or you might choose to balance the two. So you're like, if you can't get quite as much of the yellow out of this one, you might bring it down in this so that it matches that a little bit more. But that's not bad actually between the two going from one to the other. I, I you know, they do look like they were kind of shot in very similar situations. Um, I do feel like it almost actually needs a little bit out of the, a little bit of green out of this. I think it's possibly the background that's influencing me there, but I might just go into these. Yeah, there we go. Starting to get there. They're pulling a little bit of that green, which is cancelling out those pinks and reds. Yeah, start to look a bit better. So there we go. So it's just a little bit of kind of like small adjustments you can kind of make just to to match up your colours. Um, another option you have here again, this are the defaults. I tend not to find these hugely effective, but if you're if you want to give them a go, you can. Let's just bring the, the volume down here so you can have a look um, at our balance color. So the balance color option tries to get it exposes as well as it can. That's not bad. It's okay. Again, this for me there's a little bit too much green in, in the image, but uh, I do quite like that one. So if I was going to take down a little bit of the color just manually, we might have brought a little bit of this down, but very, very minimal. I quite like the one for this particular image. Definitely bring the saturation kind of up and possibly the exposure down. Just get those nice rich the rich colours, so that's pretty good. Um, so yeah, so that's like your kind of basic, uh, those basic kind of colour correction options. Um, they're ones, again, it's purely aesthetic. You can use it very, very creatively to create really high contrast, um, low contrast kind of images, just working with some really interesting colour tones. You can be completely off the wall and make things kind of pink and purple and you know, overexposed desaturate and you can, you can really have a play and get some really interesting looks and feels from, from your imagery but I'd say you know for what for most projects you want you want to make it look you know as um as natural as, as as you can. So thank you very much for watching and hope that was useful. See you next time.